Hi, it's Molly and welcome back to my channel. Welcome here if it's your first time. Today's video is all about contouring and I am so excited to get into it. This is gonna be a great tutorial for both beginners and for mature skin. Before we get started, you can find me on Instagram at Girl Get Glamorous and on Pinterest at Molly Gardner One. And with YouTube, please subscribe and also turn on notifications. You're gonna ding that bell. First, I would like to go over the formulas, then I'm gonna go over the mistakes that I have made myself personally contouring. And then as we get into the tutorial, I'm going to show you how I contour and how I corrected those mistakes. Let's get started. Contour is the technique of adding shadows to your face, which will create depth and definition. Right now, I just have foundation on, and you can see that my skin is looking a little bit one-dimensional. When you think of contouring, think about your face as a canvas. And at this point with foundation on, we have a really nice blank, smooth canvas ready to work on. Think about when somebody's drawing and they just start to add a little bit of depth and darker tone, and it really brings it to life and gives it this amazing realness. Which brings me to another point. Sometimes I know people think that contouring, highlighting, all these techniques can be a little bit over the top, but I really love to think about makeup as an art. I find it very therapeutic to put makeup on. And as well, you would never walk into a museum and say, you know, nice place, but I really wish they left all these canvases blank. Or you would never walk into somebody's house and be like, nice house, but you decorated? Sometimes people think that makeup equates with self-esteem. It really doesn't. It's just an art form like decorating, drawing, any other art form. So enjoy it. Contouring is wonderful and it's a really cool technique. Contouring generally comes in two formulas. You can either have a cream formula or a powder. I really love both, but I prefer cream contouring for every day and for mature skin because it blends really easily and looks really natural on the skin. As we get into talking a little bit more about setting your makeup and contouring for photography, we will talk about powders. One of the big mistakes that I made when I first started out contouring was that I Im immediately went for both a powder and I also went for the darkest powder that I could find. I just wanted a big, bad shadow. And as you can see when we were doing the contour mistakes, if you get a darker contour shade that's too dark for your skin, when you start to have to blend it that much to get it blended in, it looks really muddy, like you just kind of are dirty on your face. And then as you zoom in, you can see it in your pores. And I really don't think that that's the look that anyone's going for. You can see here that these are my two contour shades. You're going to pick a contour shade that's only about one shade deeper than your skin tone. Even though I am a peach undertone, which is warmer, I do tend to go a little bit on the cooler side with my contour. I leave the warmth to my bronzers. What I was doing before, let me show you with a brush. Basically, if you suck in, you can see you've got a cheek line right here where your cheek hollows. Now, if you contour here, what happens is the whole look of your face gets a little bit dragged down and you're not going to look as lifted as you want to look. You're gonna look a little bit droopy, which is not what anyone's probably wanting when they want to contour. When you're starting out with contouring, really use your actual bone structure by gently pressing in to help you figure out where to start to place things. I'm pressing right here on my cheekbone, so I know that I'm going to want to start right at the bottom part of my cheekbone with my line. I'm going to go out towards my nose at just ever so slightly a down angle. It almost looks like I'm going exactly straight. So you can see how instead of going down, I'm going a little bit more straight. And then I'm going to blend immediately. I don't like to let the lines sit too much and I'm blending in an upward motion. 
and I'm just blending with my fingers. You can also blend with a beauty blender. Now, as you can see, this is a really subtle definition, and that's what I love about cream formulas. It moves with your skin, it looks really natural, and in my opinion, it's great for everyday wear because it just looks like your skin, and you just look like you have these great natural contours and shadows to your face. So I'm gonna do that again on the other side. Here's my cheekbone, so I'm gonna start right at the bottom of my cheekbone, that's where I'm going to place the line, and I start back at my ear. And instead of following my cheek down, I follow it out. And I'm gonna blend up, back towards my ear. Next up is forehead. What we're trying to do with forehead contouring, number one, if you have a more square forehead like I do, we can really round out these corners and create a soft shape there. But also, what you wanna do is make sure that the proportion of the upper part of your face is the same as the lower part. I wanna show you something kinda of crazy, and yes, I have a measuring tape. You don't have to do this, but if you're curious, absolutely grab it, and I will say, as a makeup artist, I would never ever measure somebody else's face because I'm never telling them what I'm doing, I'm just evening things out and, and creating a nice dimension, but I would never want someone to think or feel like they had something that needed to be corrected. But on myself, this is just a really kind of interesting detail. So like I said, contouring is all about creating symmetry in the face and creating shadow. So if you have areas that are a little bit asymmetrical from one side to the next, you can really correct those asymmetries by adding shadows, which is kind of cool. Now, if you are drawing just a face on a piece of paper, what you wanna do is make sure that the forehead space from between the eyebrows to the top of the forehead is the same exact distance from underneath the nose to the bottom of the chin. So what, how we translate that to real life is, grab your tape measure. <laughs> you can see that I'm gonna hold the tape measure here and I'm pulling it down to the center of my forehead. My forehead is two inches and three quarters long. Now let's measure from the center of my nose down to my chin. The center of my nose down to my chin is two inches and one quarter in. My forehead is about half an inch larger than the space between my nose to my chin. So I'm gonna add in a, about a half an inch of contour and that's going to visually even out the distance between my forehead and my chin and nose. You can see now why I also told you I wanna do this in real time because it does take a little bit of time at first to figure out all these things and explain it. First, I'm gonna even out these corners of my forehead because I do have some hereditary balding right here where I don't grow as much hair. So I'm going to add some contouring there. And like I said, I like to immediately blend just with my fingers. I blend directly into my hairline. I just keep it going so that there's no gap in between my hairline and the contouring. And you can see that very gently rounds out the edge of my forehead. Okay, now those edges are rounded and I'm gonna go in and add about a half an inch of contour to my forehead. And again, I'm blending in towards my hairline so that there's no gap, there's no white line between my forehead and my hairline. Now I'm grabbing my blender that was damp. I squeezed it into a towel and it's been sitting out for about 20 minutes. So it's still slightly damp, but there's no actual water coming out or being pressed into my skin. It's just really uh, nice to help blend that contour out. And now you can see that this area is a little bit darker and it's giving my face more proportion between my forehead and the bottom part of my face. Let's go right into jawline now because if I were to draw the line 
right along my jawline where you could see it. That's going to erase all of the contouring effects that we just had on the forehead and it's gonna make this part of my face appear smaller. But I do like to have a slim and defined looking jaw. I mean, who wouldn't? And this is also great if you are starting to get a little bit of a double chin or just have a little bit more weight here underneath your chin, which happens when we age. What I'm going to do, I like to tilt my head back and I like to drop directly under my jawline. Now again, if you need to, feel for your bone. I can feel my bone right here. So I'm going to go right on top of my bone, but underneath my jawline. See when I look right out, you cannot see the contour. And in this instance, I'll blend down first. This is actually one of the few times that I'll blend down first before blending upwards. I generally like to blend upwards because it does lift your face. But in this case, the reason I blend down is because I don't want a stark line between my face and my neck. I don't want a distinct shadow right here. I want the shadow to appear blended. If you are especially worried about this under chin area, you can go back in and you can see right here, there's a little bit of extra skin here. And so you can add a little bit of extra contour there. And as I'm blending, I think this is a really good way to see how great and easy the cream products are to work with. You see, I just use my fingers and the heat of my skin and my fingers naturally helps blend that contour out. And as you can see, I don't, I personally don't think anything is looking too over the top. I just feel like my face has some really nice definition to it. Contouring your nose does not necessarily have to do with size, but for me, contouring really helps just define my nose so that it doesn't sort of fade into the rest of my face. What I like to do, I never do a line under my nose or over here because that will just make the ball of your nose appear larger. What I like to do is I grab my stick and I'll go right down the outside edge of my nose and I'll blend that up towards my eye and then I'll go down the side of my nose and I'll make the letter L. I'll do the same thing on the other side And I just blend that one out, I'll blend it up, and then I blend it up and out in the shape of that letter L. And that's it. It just gives your, your nose a little bit more definition. Everyone will need to contour different areas. If your forehead is the same distance or even smaller than your nose and jawline, you're not gonna to wanna to contour your forehead. You're going to want to leave that as is. I work with some models and their cheeks are already so defined that if I do a lot of contour, it can just make them look a little bit sunken. So I'll skip contouring on their cheeks totally and it will give them that sort of like chubby cheeked youthful effect. So contouring is a really personal technique. You are going to have to look at your face and decide for you where you need contour and where you can skip it or want to skip it. Now that we went over all of the placement, let's do it again in real time so you can see how fast it goes. I know I'm gonna end up with a double contouring, but I do feel like the cream is pretty natural, so I will take the double contour today.
And that's it in real time. Super, super fast, really easy. In terms of where in my routine I apply contour, I personally do it after foundation and concealer, but before highlight, blush, and bronzer. And if you're using a cream formula, remember that creams always have to go on before a powder. You can never really use a cream after a powder because it will just drag along the powder and it's really difficult to blend. When I want to set my contour, usually I'll go and set everything with a little bit of setting spray because for dry skin or mature skin, it's a great way to set your makeup without having to use a ton of powder. If you are doing contouring for flash photography, like you are going to have family photos taken, headshots, work photos, wedding, etc., you might want even a little bit more definition because flash photography will wash out the makeup that's on your face. In that case, what I do is I grab my powders and I'm going to take the lightest powder in this range. And this is the Wayne Goss Airbrush. It is the best brush in the world because it has this nice taper. So I dip that tapered part right into the powder. And as you can see, I'm just picking up a little bit. It's not an excessive amount of powder at all. And I'm just gonna go over exactly where I just contoured with the cream. And you might want to grab a different size brush for your nose, but for me, but this tapered edge actually still works for my nose. If you ever feel like you're getting too much on, just grab your blender and beauty blenders are absolutely a miracle product for really lightening up the application. I'm actually going to go take a photo right now so you can see what this looks like with a flash. Here are the contour results outside. I just love how the cream formulas look so natural and this is even the cream for formula set with the powder. One more thing that I want to add is that as a makeup artist, I've had to learn when to just take a step back and assess. You might put some contour on. It's either gonna seem like too much or then you blend it out and it seems like there's not enough there. But instead of just putting more on, really step back and just take in how it's all looking. And you might be really pleasantly surprised by how it's all kind of coming together. But I know at first it's a little bit tricky your eyes might be deceiving you, and sometimes if you have sensitive skin like myself and you blend something out, your skin is gonna be red right away and it's gonna look a little bit off. So just step back, give your skin a second to settle down, and then see how it's all coming together. I had to pin my hair back because it was driving me a little bit crazy. <laughs> Let's talk products. I've got some of my top picks as well as my drugstore picks. I do use both of them. These aren't just me throwing out drugstore products to throw out a drugstore product. They're things that I actually do own and use. The first one is the Fenty Matchstick in shade Amber. This is 0.25 ounces and it retails for $25. It is, I feel like, the contour product I was waiting for my whole life. It's amazing. I bought this, I think, the first weekend it was released. I use it almost every single day and I just, I feel like it looks almost brand new. And to me, this is the absolute most perfect contour shade for fair and light skin tones. I just can't say enough nice things about it. I feel like it's sheer enough that it looks natural, but it definitely has enough pigment to really make an impact. Another cream product that I love is this stick called the Jordana Sculpt and Go Creamy Contour Stick. And this is 0.23 ounces, and this retailed for around $9. Just like the Fenty, it is a stick super easy to apply. This is slightly warmer than the Fenty. I do feel like this formula is a little bit creamier and blends out almost too much for me. So sometimes I, I end up adding a second layer to really get the contour level that I want. But overall, it's really gorgeous. I purchased shade 01 and it's just a beautiful, beautiful product. Like not even just, not even for a drugstore. It's just a beautiful product. Let me swatch these for you so you guys can see them. This is the Fenty that is a little bit cooler toned and the slightly warmer stick is the Jordana. Let me try and blend them out so you can see what I mean. 
The Fenty to me is the absolute most perfect consistency for a contour stick. And I love that it doesn't really settle in any of the lines. Um, you can see right here on my hand, it doesn't settle. It doesn't really settle into any lines on your face as well if you have any vertical lines forming. And let me do, use a new finger to blend the Giordana. And you can see the Giordana is also gorgeous, doesn't settle in fine lines. I think you can see what I mean about how it blends out a little teeny bit more than the Fenty. So sometimes I'll just go back in, you know, and layer just to get the right amount of contour. But both really, really beautiful, amazing contour shades. The stick formula could not be better or easier to use. Moving on to powders. My absolute favorite powder in the world is called the Fiona Styles Sheer Sculpting Palette in shade light medium. This is the best contour shade I've ever found. It's just one shade deeper than my skin. It is so perfect. Unfortunately, it's been discontinued. I don't understand why they discontinue excellent products, but you can still find it certain places. It retails for $20. You can see how sheer and beautiful that is. What you wanna look for in a contour powder is actually that sheer texture. You don't want it to be super, super pigmented because it will make it harder to blend and it will make it just harder to look natural. This is the ABH contour in Fawn. I just stuck it in a little magnetic palette. And this is a beautiful contour shade as well. I believe these retail for $12. And you can see this is a little bit deeper. It's about the middle shade of the Fiona Styles palette. So it will come out a little bit deeper. There is a lighter shade now that they make. So you can see it is one shade deeper. So this is a nice one for when I have a, a, a fake tan, I will use this. And her powders do have slightly more pigment, but I still think that they're fairly sheer and beautiful. You do wanna really have a sheer powder finish so that when your face moves, it just looks like a shadow and so that it's not a harsh line that's really difficult to blend or ends up sitting in your pores. This is my favorite drugstore contour palette. And it is such a bummer that they stopped making it. This palette is so good. It used to be, I wanna say $13, and I think I found it for five or six. So I linked everything below in the description box. Click on see more if you guys want those links. And this is shade light. Let me swatch this. This is one of the prettiest drugstore contour shades I have ever seen. It is so true to a real shadow color. It's sheer, it's light, it's absolutely stunning. The only thing that drives me crazy is that this highlight has shimmer in it. So sometimes the shimmer falls into the contour. I try to actually never use the highlighter so that it doesn't fall in here and get messy. I really wish that they would just make this contour powder on its own and just fill up the whole thing with it because it's really incredible, incredible contour. I never understand when companies give you a brush. I threw out this brush almost immediately. It's just so wasteful, but it was like rubbing sandpaper on my face. I, I'm not gonna use it. All I actually want from this palette is this little gray triangle. And so if L'Oreal just wanted to do contour uh, powders on their own, I would buy that. Let's get into brush. The Wayne Goss Airbrush. This is the, and I am not exaggerating, the best brush I have ever owned. It's the best brush in the entire world. It has this slight taper. My gosh, it is fabulous. It is absolutely fantastic brush. It's handmade in Japan, and this brush is only $35. As a makeup artist, I feel like I'm constantly seeking to improve my tools. And Japanese handmade natural bristle brushes are really, really pricey. They generally start around $60 for face brushes and go up to like, $200, which is a lot of money in my opinion. So $35 for a handmade Japanese brush. And I'm not only that, it is the softest brush I've ever used. And this tapered bit just absolutely so perfectly gets powder into the areas where you need it. I had this brush for, I wanna say three days before I ordered a second one to put in my kit. And the top is actually so narrow that I can even do a little light nose contour with it. I use the larger flat side to apply blush. It's just phenomenal. I don't even have product on. I was just tapping my cheeks because it feels so nice. And every single time I use this brush on a client, they always ask me what I'm using and want to see the brush because it just feels so incredible on 
your skin. If you do want to be a little bit more specific about your nose contour, this is the e.l.f. This is one of their precisely clear brushes. Their precisely clear brush line is phenomenal. They are so soft. They are all synthetic, so you can use them with powder or cream formulas. Now, this brush is too wide on its own for a contour, but if you get the contour right on the edge, let me show you. And you can also use this to blend in any of that cream product as well because it is a synthetic bristle. This is a really nice brush as well. Just be cautious to not use that flat side for anything but blending or else you will probably get a line that's just a little bit too thick for anyone's liking. And last but not least, I feel like if you have seen even just one video on my channel, you know how obsessed I am with the Beauty Blender Pro. It's the black version of the Beauty Blender. It's extra soft. I don't know why it's so much softer than the rest of them, but it's truly incredible. I know it's a $20 sponge, I get it, but nothing really blends out and finishes makeup quite like it. I clean mine with DHC oil, so my blenders lost me over a year. So in my opinion, it just, I cannot do makeup without it. So for me, I will spend $20 on a sponge. <laughs> I just have to have it. I really love it. That is everything. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you found this video helpful, informative, please not only subscribe and hit notifications, but also give the video a thumbs up. That helps other people find the video. It tells YouTube that the video is useful so it can show it to other people. Please leave me a comment. Let me know if this video helped you. Let me know if you learned anything or if there's anything that you still want to know. I am happy to share whatever I have learned as a working makeup artist so please ask away there's always more on the blog there's over 300 blog posts on girl good glamorous so you can always go check those out in between video uploads and that's everything Whew. all right i will see you in the next video thank you